the win nine is the head of department of hepatology of the University of Medicine One and the Yangon Specialist Hospital. And he is also a senior patron of the Myanmar Liver Foundation as well as Myanmar Liver, uh, Myanmar GI and Liver Foundation. Those are one nine, please. Thank you, sir, for your kind introduction. So, good evening to everybody. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my topic is non invasive assessment of the fatty liver disease, non alcoholic fatty liver disease. Nowadays, there is an increasing prevalence of the nephrology and the severe outcomes of NASH may call for effective methods to identify the nephrology. We usually do the liver biopsy. Uh, the liver biopsy is a good gold standard, but it is limited by its sampling bars, poor accessibility, and severe complications such as mortality, bleeding, and pain. So we need a non-invasive methods to avoid biopsy for diagnosing nephrology. So nephrology presentation is uh, mostly it is asymptomatic, uh, majority discovered by chance, and fatigue is the frequently present symptoms. And often nephrology is the incidental findings, incidental abnormal LFT, incidental bright liver on imaging, incidental hepatomegaly, like uh, uh, checkup, and then uh, monitoring of the statin annual reviews in type 2 diabetes mellitus, uh, hyperlipidemia, hypertension clinic. And we did and make medical insurance checkup and occasional health checks that can diagnose the nephrology incidentally. So there is a programmatic uh, step, uh, uh, risk identification, like a metabolic syndrome or other high prevalence group. The history should be alcohol intake less than 14 in the female and 21 in the male units per week, no known pre-existing liver disease. And we did an investigation like liver biochemistry, ALT, AST, et cetera. We have to exclude or identify other liver diseases, negative HPV, HCV serology, negative autoantibodies, negative celiac serology, and normal immunoglobulins and other uh, ferritin upper way and the trypsin deficiency, COBA, et cetera. And then liver ultrasound should reveal increased echogenicity and steatosis. So ALT can be normal in more than 50% of the individuals with NASH and 80% of the individual with nephrology. So liver enzyme is assessing, not good for the assessing nephrology or NASH. So ALT can be elevated in more than 50% of the individual with nephrology but without NASH. So in NFLD, LD is neither indicative nor predicted of NASH or fibrosis stage. So normal LD does not preclude NASH or progressive disease, and elevated LD cannot predict the NASH or fibrosis. So LD and ASC is not sensitive markers for the uh, NFLD and NASH. So non-invasive tests, uh, proper use of the non-invasive tests can aid risk stratification like a demographics, uh, uh, vibration control, transient electrography, or the laboratory markers that enrich for the uh, development of the NASH and the fibrosis. So the current non-invasive method is useful for assessing NFLD, including steatosis, NASH, and NFLD-related fibrosis. And we have to explore the advantages and disadvantages of the measurement of the tools. So in clinical practice, uh, the potential non-invasive biomarkers are used for the tracking of the disease processes, monitoring treatment efforts, and explore effective algorithms consisting of imaging and non-imaging biomarkers for advanced fibrosis. So diagnosis of the NFLD can be done by serum biomarkers and biomarkers panel, uh, fatty liver index, hepatic steatosis index, HSI, steatosis test, Nephrology screening school or imaging, cause imaging by doing ultrasound, CT scan, control attenuation parameter, or magnetic resonance imaging. 
So fatty liver in this is a prevalent biomarker panel consisting of body mass index BMI, waist circumferences, triglyceride, and gamma glutein transferase. So for unidentified nephrology with a total score varying between zero and 100, AU ROC of FLI for unidentified nephrology is 0 0.84, and the low cut of 30 is used to rule out nephrology, and the high cut of 60 is ruled to use for positive likelihood of 4.3. So fatty liver index is poorly distinguishes between moderate or severe steatosis from mild steatosis. So HSI, steatitic hepatic steatosis index, HSI is a biomarker panel consisting of BMI, diabetes, and the ALT, ASD ratio. So AU ROC of 0 0.79 and 0 0.82, and the derivation and validation groups, the two cuts of 30 and 60 achieve more than 90% sensitivity and specificity. So it is a good uh, specificity and, and sensitivity. So HSI accuracy decreases in obese children uh, with an AU ROC of 0 0.67, sensitivity of 67%, and specificity of 62%. So it is not good for the obese children, but HSI poorly distinguishes moderate to severe steatosis from mild steatosis. Another one is tier two test. Tier two test is a biomarker panel consisting of 10 biochemical tests, each gender and BMI. So AORC of 0 0.8 for identifying more than 5% of the fat content in patients with chronic liver disease. So another one is NAFAL screening score. The NAFAL screening score is modeled with age, fasting blood glucose, BMI, triglyceride, ALT, AST, and urea acids. So nephrology risk score is includes six lab parameters with an AUROC of 0 0.87, 0 0.88. So imaging thing is we have an ultrasound. This is a first line imaging test used in a clinical practice. A typical appearance is hyperagogenic liver and sensitivity of 85% and specificity of 94% for moderate to severe stethosis. So ultrasound can inapplicable for detecting steatosis of less than 20% of steatosis in individuals with morbid obesity. The, the accuracy of ultrasound for hepatitis steatosis assessment is affected by presence of severe fibrosis and intra and inter-observer variability. So to detect nephrology in early stage, the computer-assisted ultrasound or hepatic renal ratio, HR and US hepatic attenuation area, uh, Attenuation rates are used to assess the steatosis quantitatively. Another one is the CT scan. So non-NS CT scan has been used to evaluate severity of the fatty liver disease since 1970 and hepatic attenuation is inversely associated with the hepatic fat content. So normal liver has an attenuation value of 50 to 65 Hansfeld unit and 8 to 10 Hansfeld unit higher than that of the spleen on error, the attenuation may be decreased to less than 40 Hansfeld units when fat infiltration occurs. Non-NSCD perform, outperform the ultrasound and evaluating the severity of the fatty liver. And contrast NSCD imaging are another CD model and more suitable for severe hepatic steatosis using paraspinal or intercostal muscle because its sensitivity for mild to moderate hepatitis steatosis is only 25%. So CD may also be used for the hepatic fat quantification, such as dual energy CD and hepatic innovation measurement. Although CD is most effective, it is limited by insufficient accuracy for mild to moderate hepatitis steatosis, and we have a radiation exposure, especially in the children. Another way is the CAP, control attenuation parameter. CAP is a parameter based on the ultrasonic signals. It's used by the fibrous scan with the amplitude with a result of 100 to 400 decibel per minute. The so cat with an amplitude is reported to have an AURC of 0.82 and differentiating any degree of steatosis versus no steatosis. So the cutoff of 240 decibel per minute yields a sensitivity of 69%. And specifically for 82%. Another one is MRI. MRI 
data mean statuses by signal intensity differences on opposed phase of the Fed situation in MRI. So MRI drive proton density Fed federation, we call it MRI PD at the PDFF is at the robust non-invasive MRI based method for assessing the hepatitis steatosis. So MRI visible protons that combine with the Fed in the liver to quantify steatosis by dividing all protons in the liver. So MRI PDF have got significantly associated with the histological steatosis grade according to the NASH CRN grade independent of age, sex, and other NASH parameters and NASH diagnosis. So MRN BDFF is suspect superior to other imaging tools for the assessment of the hepatitis steatosis, and its performance is not affected by the obesity. So MRN BDFF is also regarded as a robust, non-invasive method to monitor the treatment effect. Another one is HMRS. It is MR-based technique that directly measures the chemical composition of the liver, and it is used for the measurement of intrahepatocellular lipid through the calculating PDFF. A high correlation with the biopsy and steatosis assessment and sensitivity of 80% for the diagnosis of liver fat content in more than 5% of the cases. So diagnosis of the NASH is characterized by steatosis, ballooning, inflammation, with or without fibrosis, and which accelerate disease progression. So early detection of the NASH is conductive of prevention of the NASH-related fibrosis. So we use the non-invasive biomarkers, like symbol serum biomarkers, biomarker panels, and imaging. The first one is the cytokeratin 18, CK18. CK18 is an intermediate filament protein. It is cleaved during the period of a cell death containing CK18M30 and CK18M65. So a meta-analysis of the 25 studies reported that M30 and M65 with the AURC of 0.82, the sensitivity and specificity was 75% and 77%. So combining metabolic syndrome, ALT, and CK18 in a morbidity obese population could achieve an AURC of 0.88 compared with the CK18 alone with the ARO of 0 0.87. The triple combination of the adiponectin, CK18, and interleukin-6, achieving AUR of 0 0.90, a specificity of 85.7% and sensitivity of 84.5%. So the difference in the accuracy of CK18 and assessing NASH with the different stages of the fibrosis. Another one is inflammatory markers like the CACL10. It is a pro-inflammatory cytokine involved in the diabetes and obesity. CACL10 is exhibited a moderate accuracy of differentiating NASH from simple steatosis. Tumor necrosis factor alpha and interleukin 8 are common inflammatory markers, which also exhibit moderate performance with a sensitivity and specificity of 72% and 76%. So when combining these two markers with a paroglutamate, the panel could achieve a sensitivity of 91% and specificity of 87%. Adipocytokines and hormones. So fibroblast growth factor 21, FGF 21, secreted by the liver and is another potential biomarker for the NASH. FGF 21 had an AURC of 0.62 and had a more than 90% sensitivity and specificity for the diagnosis of NASH with the positive and negative PP2 0.59 and 0 0.87, 0 0.49 to 0 0.60 respectively. So FGF21 has combined with the CK18 to improve the positive PP2 value to 82% and negative PP2 value for to 74%. Other serum biomarkers like the serum ion is a common protein associated with the oxygen radicals, which contribute to the necroinflammation and fibrosis. So serum ion was higher in individuals with NASH than in those with the symbol steatosis. So in Japanese studies, serum ferritin exhibited a moderate performance for the diagnosing of the NASH. Another biomarker panel is NASH test. The NASH test combines 30 parameters to diagnose NASH in three categories, NASH, borderline NASH, and no NASH, according to the uh, cleanest criteria. A study of 257 people found that the NASH test achieved an AURC of 0.79 for NASH and 0.69 for 
for the borderline NASH and 0 0.77 to 0 0.832, no NASH. Another one is NASH uh, Clean Lip Med School. The NASH Clean School is a biomedical panel combining ESD, fasting insulin, the PNAP LE3 genotype at the RS738409, which achieved an ARC of 0 0.78 for diagnosing NASH. So to improve the accuracy, the metabolic syndrome based factors for the NASH, which was named NASH Clip Lip Med School, that improved the ARC to 0 0.87 and the sensitivity to 75%. Other biomarker panels like uh, biomarker panels, parameters of BMI, ALT, and triglyceride. So ARC of 0 0.80 to 0 0.82 in training validation cohorts only include 180 morbidity obese patients after bariatric surgery, and clinical score of ALT, GGT, and C-reactive protein, APOB and APOA1 ratios. So the cutoff of 3.8 gave a sensitivity of 90% and specificity of 87% for discrete NASH from the NFLD. So imaging for the dash, the NASH consists of various parameters, ultrasound, CT, and MRI, to distinguish between NASH and sample steatosis. Elastography was investigated to distinguish NASH and sample steatosis. So the cutoff was 2.74 kPa for MRI. MRE had an error RC of 0 0.93, but the study had several limitations. Another way is VCTE, vibration control transient elastography, which was performed in South Korean for patients with an ARC of 0 0.75 and sensitivity of 86% for the diagnosing of the NASH, but specificity was only 58%. The liver ion accumulation, LIC, measured by the MI signal decay value, is significantly related to nephrology disease, serratian, fibrosis progression. So MR-based technology assessing LINC was found to have an ARC of 0 0.91 for assessing NASH with a sensitivity of 83% and specificity of 80%. The new biomarkers like uh, saccharide microRNAs are potentially regarded as attractive biomarkers for the NFLD. And meta-analysis found that microRNA 34A was reported to have a moderate ARC of 0 0.8778, microRNA 122 had a pool ARC of 0 0.64 to 0 0.70 for differentiating NASH and a simple steatosis. So the combination of the microRNA 122, 192, and 21 with CK18 and ASP396 achieved an ARC of 0 0.83 for diagnosing NASH, while the optimal cutoff gave a moderate sensitivity and specificity. So other Dumba biomarkers are like uh, bread volatile organic compounds, VOC, and bread VOCs are closely related to oxidative stress, inflammation, and liver diseases. So a panel consisting of three acyl compounds, one propanol, three methyl butanoride, and n decaying at an error also of 0 0.77, PBV of 81%, and NBV of 82%, for differentiating NASH and non-NASH. So non-invasive biomarkers of NASH are an attractive field. CK18 is regarded as a popular biomarker for NASH, but the accuracy varies in current studies. So biomarker panels perform well in diagnosing NASH, but most of them are not validated. Although the other non-biomarkers, such as imaging and gene biomarkers, they are reported relatively high accuracy, Effective methods should be available, simple, inexpensive, and accurate in clinic. The serum biomarker CKAD are less accurate for diagnosing NASH with the mild fibrosis, which could lead to higher rates of mid misdiagnosis. So to improve the diagnosis in early NASH, biomarker panels or combination of the serum biomarkers with the MEG may contribute to ruling or ruling in or ruling on of the NASH with the early fibrosis. Another one is diagnosis of the nephrotic related fibrosis. So we can use non fibrosis, mild fibrosis F0 to F1, significant fibrosis F2, and advanced fibrosis F3, and cirrhosis like F4 and metavia score. 
So it is easy to identify early fibrosis through effective non-invasive methods. So proprietary biomarkers like a collagen, pro-collagen type 3, PN, uh, P3NP, precursor of C3 protein, hyaluronic acids, and TIM1, they are the, uh, the markers of the uh, proprietary biomarkers. And another one is NS liver fibrosis ELF test. ELF test is a commercial tool that combines three circulating matrix turnover compounds, including hyaluronic acid, P3 and BN, TIM1 with H. So using the cutoff of 9.8 in the ELF test identify advanced fibrosis with positive predictive value of 72% and negative predictive value of 97%. Non-proprietary biomarkers are AST to platelet ratio index, fibrosis score index, nephrology fibrosis score, and BART score. So every year is the symbolized calculation for diagnosing fibrosis, severity, and chronic hepatitis C. And recent an meta analysis reported that every had an ROC of 0 0.70 for significant fibrosis and 0 0.75 for advanced fibrosis and 0 0.75 for the cirrhosis. So pool sensitivity of the every was relatively low with a range of 0 0.33 to 0 0.73 for different cutoff. Fifth four is a common biomarker panels used for the assessing fibrosis and severity, including age. Playlet on AST, ALT. Fifth four was primarily devised to assess the liver fibrosis severity in hepatitis C patients. An ROC of value of 0 0.75 to significant fibrosis and 0 0.80 for advanced fibrosis and 0 0.85 for cirrhosis was reported in nephrology patients. On the other hand, using cutoff of 0 0.3.25. Fifth four predicted advanced fibrosis with 26% sensitivity and 98% specificity, 75% PPV and 85% NPV. So fifth four, the two cutoffs may improve PPV and NPV, so avoiding unnecessary biopsy. So the specificity of the fifth four was 0 0.35 for assessing advanced fibrosis in elderly individuals more than 65 years of age. So fifth four is not good for the uh, or elderly patients. So nephrology fibrosis score, NFS is the most common non-invasive biomarker panel for assessing fibrosis severity. It consists of H, BMI, hyperglycemia, ASC, ALD ratio, platelets, and albumin. A multi center study reported low cutoff of 1.455 for advanced fibrosis with a positive predictive value of 51% to 56% and negative predictive value of 88% to 93%. Using this model, 75% of the biopsy could be spared with a 90% correct prediction. So Nafaldi fibrosis score was widely validated in different reasons. And the NFS and FIP4 are recommended to identify those at a low and high risk of advanced fibrosis or cirrhosis and clinical guidelines. Another one is a BART score. The BART score was an essential, easily calculated score using a uh, parameter of BMI, aldosterone renal activity ratio, and the presence of type 2 diabetes mellitus. A score of 2 to 4 increased the risk of the advanced fibrosis by 74, where the ARC was 0.81% to uh, NAP on 96%, low predictive value of 43%. Imaging like that. BCTE. BCTE is the first FDA approved elastographic modality performed by the FibroScan MRI US based technology. And this technology measures the velocity of 50 megahertz shear wave that is emitted by a probe in the intercostal space. And the technical failure was found to be more common phenomena, the ranging from 6.7% to 27% and was related to the high BMI. So Embro was the most prevalent probe used for the uh, high BMI patient. Second one is a shear wave elastography. Shear wave elastography is a new method integrated into conventional ultrasound for assessing the fibrosis. Can measure the shear wave velocity and provide 2D real-time color map or liver elasticity. Should be conducted 
and uh, apnea. Shear wave electrography reportedly has a high diagnostic performance for fibrosis assessment in chronic hepatitis B patient. And shear wave is better than the fibrous scan in acoustic radiation force impulse AFI. And no special regulations are recommended by the manufacturer for assessing the quality of the measurement. And some study assess the failure rate of SWE with the reliability criteria for fibrous scan. RFE is elastography, alternative tools for fibrous assessment integrated into conventional ultrasound. It uses short-term acoustic process to produce shear wave where the results is present meter per seconds. RFE should be operated under apnea and the region of the in interest should be vessel free region. The URC of 0 0.77 significant fibrosis and 0.84 for advanced fibrosis and 0.84 for the cirrhosis. MRE, MRE is the non-invasive MRE based method using a liver stiffness by using modifying phase contrast method. MRE can assess the entire liver with a high success rate in. It is not affected by steatosis and may be applied in patient with obesity, ascites, bowel interposition, between the liver and the anterior abdominal wall. So MRE is available model, contains 2D MRE, 3D MRE. 2D MRE is more frequently used for assessing fibrosis and nephrology patients. 3D MRE had a better performance for the detecting of the advanced fibrosis than the 2D MRE. MRE was superior to fibrous scan and RFE and common power marker panels for discriminating Dichrotomize fibrous stage and nephrology patients. So, considering higher accuracy of MRE in diagnosing fibrosis, it is increasingly regarded as a promising surrogate biomarkers for monitoring fibrosis progression and points of fibrosis therapy. Other new biomarkers like the serum DNA methylation and plasma DNA methylation or PBERR promoter was reported to have a good performance for diagnosis of the advanced fibrosis with a cutoff of 0.81 to positive predictive value 91% and negative predictive value for 87%. So biomarker panels are cheap, feasible, to reproducible, have a good negative predictive for fibrosis, but they are limited by its low positive predictive value. So MRI shows excellent accuracy for fibrosis severity and only be used in some drug studies. Transient elastography together with the biomarker panels were widely used for assessing fibrosis, but the efficacy of should be evaluated in more independent groups. So it is recommended to combine serum biomarkers or clinical rules with the imaging tools to diagnose fibrosis, which could reduce the unnecessary diagnostic biopsy. So non-invasive biomarkers are used for their progression and therapy. And tracking of the disease progression and at least significantly increase the risk of the liver disease, morbidity, and mortality. So, fibrosis, not a simple steatosis and NASH, increase the risk of the mortality and nephrology. One stage of fibrosis progression takes 14.3 years and 7.1 years in individuals with a simple steatosis and NASH patient. So, most of the nephrology cases are asymptomatic until the disease is progressed to cirrhosis. So, there is a needed to apply useful non-invasive biomarkers to monitor disease progression. Tracking disease progression, we can use liver histology, APRI, fit 4 n and NFS for the predicting clinical outcomes, ARO LC of 0 0.85, 0 0.89, 0 0.89, 0 0.79 respectively. And fibrous scan had an accuracy of 0 0.73 for predicting all cause mortality. Further studies are needed to determine more effective non invasive biomarkers for the progression of the NASH to NASH related fibrosis and progression of the NASH related fibrosis to advanced clinical outcomes. Regarding the monitoring of the response to therapies, nephrology treatment, it is impractical to observe the primary endpoint for mortality due to long term follow up. So FDA recommends that historical improvement be confirmed when the resolution of the NASH is obtained. However, rapid biopsy hinders the development of the drugs. 
So MRI and BDFF was usually employed average liver fat content, and study of nearly 113 NASH patients treated with the obeticolic acid found that MRI and BDFF had an AURC of 0.81. In contrast, phase two trial of the Salontinib found that MRI and BDFF had an AURC of 0.70 for the reduced systolic density doses grade. So whether the change of MRI and BDFF could be regarded as an effective surrogate endpoint for NASH treatment should be further evaluated. So MRI and BDFF was used to employ to evaluate the liver fat content change in clinical trial for NASH patients. So monitoring of the response to treatment. So liver function test was regarded non-invasive biomarkers for assessing the norm, monitoring of the treatment effect. While EAD concentration is about two types of patient is normal, the NASH patients usually is a bit spontaneous change in liver function. So ALD changes is usually accompanied by steatosis changes. The change in liver stiffness measurement measured by the MRE was evaluated to investigate anti fibrosis effect in NERD. So MRE had an AURC was 0.62 and PBV of 39% and PBV of 92% for fibrosis improvement. So in conclusion, extensive development of the non-invasive methods and nephrology patients from serum biomarkers and imaging omics. Atrasone and HMI have a relatively high accuracy for diagnosis of nephrology, and the US is prevalently used in the clinical practice and research due to the availability and low cost. So there are currently no effective invasive biomarkers recommended for diagnosis of the NASH. Treatment studies are needed to investigate more efficient non-invasive biomarkers for distinguishing NASH from a simple steatosis. BCD and FDA approved electrographic model for assessing fibrosis severity. The effective algorithm consisting of imaging and non-imaging biomarkers should be applied to clinical practice. In addition, there is a need to investigate the cost effectiveness of non-invasive biomarkers in diagnosing nephrology and tracking disease progression, monitoring response to their therapies. So thank you very much for kind intention. Seafarm, caring for well-being.